This video is about all kinds of tuning capacitors. You see some tuning capacitors more or less for uh, a fixed value to which they can set and never be retuned again. And here we have typical tuning capacitors that all have to do with um, tuning to a specific frequency. So here you can see the plates from a butterfly capacitor. And this is a more or less classical tuning capacitor for shortwave radio or a beat frequency oscillator because its capacitance is low say between 10 and 60 picofarad or so. And here we have from an old Philips radio a typical tuner capa tuning capacitor or VFO uh, capacitor to which you can tune to different radio stations. By turning this knob it's a complete unit. Here inside we have a lot of electronics and on the outside um, I've measured the value from that cap and it is maximum 500 picofarad. Uh, there are differences and uh, similarities between all these caps. They all refer to the classical idea from a capacitor that's here, two plates opposite to each other. In between there is material, could be plastic, could be ceramic, ceramic, could be uh, air. And for tuning capacitors, in many cases it is air, that's the dielectrical in between. And the reason is that air has very good properties. Of course when air is moist, um, the conduction differs, but dry air has very good isolating properties. All the isolation materials in between here have their own properties. There are many tables and you can find them on the internet where uh, the, differ the different dielectrical properties from all kinds of materials are explained. And there are formulas to calculate the value from a cap in picofarad or microfarad. All have to do with the dielectricum and the, uh, how big the plates are. But that's not the aim of this video. The aim is to show uh, some basic uh, things of tuning capacitors. Here we, I have shown this already beautiful small uh, capacitor used in an AM radio, a car radio, to tune in uh, to medium wave radio stations. And the dielectricum is in between, is kind of plastic. Here we have a typical ceramic, ceramic uh, capacitor. Uh, it has, I cannot show that now because um, it's too tiny, but it has a, a silver layer that's damped in a vacuum chamber on the ceramic layer here and on the ceramic layer here and that is in fact the plate. And when we turn here the screw you can change the capacitance value in picofarad small this is a small capacitor, say 50 picofarad maximum or 30 picofarad. This is approximately 200 picofarad. Here we have a popular capacitor used in tuners in the good old days when we had cathode ray tube television sets. A ceramic ceramic tube, the copper screw inside is connected to one of the plates. And by tuning that copper screw 
you can change the capacitance from the plates. Here we have also popular uh, more or less fixed value capacitor. You can change the value by tuning here this in and out. And the good thing from this capacitor is that it is extremely stable and they were, were used many times in uh, radio uh, VFO variable frequency oscillators. And the reason that it was so stable is that it's made from a special type of aluminum. As far as I know it's invar. Don't know that exactly, but stable uh, metal uh, that did not uh, change much under difficult temperature conditions. And that's always a problem with all these capacitors and these also. When the temperature changes the metal becomes somewhat bigger or somewhat smaller and that gives a, a change in the capacitance value. So the temperature sensitivity from capacitors is a real issue. Another issue is the dimension from the plate. Now in the middle of the screen you see a typical plate with a typical form, shape, here this shape. And this is the other plate. Here we see another type of plate, another shape. This is the back plate. And it's clear to see that when we turn the knob from this capacitor to this side, or from this capacitor to this side, we have a, diff a different um, capacitance change because of the way how the plates were made. And here also. So for instance this will uh, perhaps change the capacitance values very quickly uh, related to the position from the knob and here not. So there are, for all, especially in old school books, old school radio books, 9020, 9050, different types of tuning capacitors. Some are called frequency linear uh, capacitors, etc. etc. And in real, that means when you use, for instance, this type of capacitor and you tune into a radio station, you will find all the radio stations close to each other. And when, for instance, you use this type of capacitor, you will find all the radio stations more spread around the scale. Could be that it is reversed in real. I don't know that exactly. Uh, I have to test that. And of course, there's a lot of theory about it. But that's not what this video is all about. Not about theory, but all about practice. I've, ma I've done many experiments with these kinds of capacitors and found out really that it differs whether they have a dielectricum from plastic, like here, here, or from air. I found for instance that this dielectricum from plastic in cheap AM radios, uh, and when I used that type of capacitor in a radio coil, I want to draw it now, here we have the tuning cap. When I used these kinds of tuning caps, not this cap, but from old uh, AM radios, in an antenna a tuned circuit, all the radio stations could be tuned very close to each other on the scale. And when I used this one, for instance, the radio stations were more spread on the scale. So it's important to know the properties from your tuning capacitor and for VFOs, variable frequency oscillators, I advise this type of um, tuning capacitors. Not especially this one, but this type of. So with air is dielectricum. Uh, my camera gives faint pictures and clear pictures. It constantly has to uh, zoom in, etc. But I hope this uh, video was more or less interesting for everyone 
uh, that wants to do radio experiments. How the capacitor was made uh, differs. It plays an important role in your radio circuit, especially radio circuits. In audio amplifier circuits there are less problems with the way the caps are made.